Rishi Sunak obviously is going to become the country's first Asian and first Hindu Prime Minister. Rishi Sunak's Hindu identity, his faith, his religion, that has become a talking point. Sunak is someone who proudly calls himself a devout Hindu, worships even the cow. A non-beef eating, non-alcohol drinking believer in the Hindu faith now has the top job in the United Kingdom. WhatsApp groups are going crazy about this. Not just an Indian, but a Hindu has got the top job in the UK. Even those who are a little less jingo normally are very proud that an Indian is ruling England. Now there's a reason for this. The British ruled us for almost 200 years and we do have a chip on the shoulder about that. Sir, I think the cat's caught his tongue. Now, finally, one of us is ruling them. Also, there's another legacy of colonialism that we do love to get approval from the white man from the Gora. I like Indian. Can't say pizza. I like Indian. Tandoori chicken, tiki, chicken tiki. Ah, chicken tiki masala. Oh, yeah, yeah, tiki. And there can be no bigger endorsement of Indians than from those who once ruled almost the entire world. But wait a minute, have the people of England really elected Rishi Sunak as their Prime Minister? No, they haven't. They have elected this man, Boris Johnson, three years ago when he led the Conservative Party to their strongest showing in three decades. Oh yes, before we move on, it's important to understand that the UK has two main parties, the Conservative Party or the Tories and the Labour Party. The Tories are a right-of-centre party. They stand for free market policies, low taxes, low government spending on welfare. The Tories have been historically opposed to immigration and it's often said that if the Conservatives had been ruling in 1947, India would not have been given independence at that time. On the other side, there is Labour. As the name suggests, it emerged out of trade unions and stands for more welfare spending and government intervention in the economy. Okay, about a hundred years ago, Labour Party had this clause called Clause 4, which said that the party would push for nationalisation of business, industry and trade. Labour adopted Clause 4 in February 1918. It was designed but over the years, as Labour moved more and more to the centre, Clause 4 remained as a defunct relic, till this man, Tony Blair, gave Labour a makeover. Britain, new Labour, New Britain. And New Labour got rid of Clause 4. So today, really, there is very little to distinguish between the Tories and Labour. One is a little less pro-market, a little more progressive when it comes to gay marriage, when it comes to women's issues. But otherwise, it's a very fine line dividing the two. Cut back to now and here is what the opinion polls look like. If polls were to take place today, Labour would get an overwhelming majority. So, Rishi Sunak comes on as Prime Minister at a time when his party's approval rating is at a historic low. That means it is silly to call him a PM with any kind of real mandate. The only positive for Sunak is that he's the least unpopular amongst Labour leaders. A recent survey done amongst those who had heard of all three of the contenders for the top post, Rishi Sunak, Penny Mordaunt and former Prime Minister Boris Johnson, Sunak's approval rating is minus 28. Yes, you heard that right, minus 28. That of Mordaunt is minus 33 and Johnson trails at minus 40. And that is where being Hindu works favorably for Rishi Sunak. But to understand that, we need a quick backstory of Indian immigration to the UK. The first lot of Indians to spend time in England were the Laskars. Sailors and deckhands who came from India on British ships spent a few months working on the docks while their boats were being repaired and restocked and then returned home to India. But the first real immigrants to England were the Sikhs. They had fought valiantly alongside British soldiers in the First World War. Thousands died, while hundreds ended up in English hospitals when the war ended. A few of them would settle there and bring their families over. Then came the Second World War. It cost Britain 6% of its adult male population and had left London and other cities in a pile of debris. Reconstruction would require a large workforce, mostly of blue-collar workers, which Britain sorely lacked. So, the British government welcomed Indian workers with open arms after the war. 
Back in India, the partition had created an entire army of workers who had been uprooted from their farms and homes. A large number of these were Sikhs, a community which had already sunk some roots in Britain. Throughout the 1950s to the 70s, they settled in Southall, which came to be known as London's Little India. Some who moved from India were professionals, like doctors, for instance. It's my bowels. I. But they weren't welcomed by all. In this country, in 15 or 20 years' time, the black man will have the whip hand over the white man. Backlash sometimes erupted onto the streets. Then in 1972, in faraway Uganda, this happened. I want to see that the whole Kampala street is not full of Indians. It must be proper black and uh, administration in those shops is run by the Ugandans. Indians were just 1% of Uganda's population, but they controlled business and trade and earned 20% of the country's national income. They had first come as indentured labor, brought by the British to build the railways and construct buildings for their colonial masters. But some were brought in to run shops and become clerks in the colonial administration. Because of this British connection, a large number of Ugandan Indians had British passports. They were given just 90 days to leave Uganda. Out of the 80,000 Indians in Uganda, more than a third moved to England. Most came with nothing at all. We leave house just like this and we train away. Only one suitcase. We keep our house. Once again, they were not welcome. We're asking him to have some common sense about this. We have a million unemployed. Uh, we can't squeeze up anymore. But Indians gradually became a fixture in Britain, especially in the greater London region. They recreated their own life, bringing popular Indian culture to the UK, especially the Indian curry. Now, historically, Indian immigrants have backed labor, partly because Labour has been more open to immigrants and also because a lot of Asian immigrants were part of trade unions which had closed ties with Labour. But since 2000s, things have started to change. The stock market boom of the 2000s made London one of the places to be for those who wanted to make it big in the glamorous world of finance. Upper caste, upper class Indians began to move to London. Sell, sell everything. They added to the business communities who had shifted from Africa and prospered in the UK. A large number of Indians in UK were now well-to-do. They went to the right schools and colleges and operated in the networks of the powerful. One such person was Rishi Sunak. Friends who are aristocrats, I have friends who are upper class, I have friends who are, you know, working class, but I'm not working class, but I mix and match and then I go to see as a certain section of Indians in UK got more and more prosperous and they were joined by financial whiz kids from India, they moved increasingly towards the Conservative Party. Hindus, radicalized over the 2000s, both in the UK and in India, also liked the Conservatives for their stand on immigration from Muslim countries. A recent survey of Indians shows that the richest Indians are more likely to back the Conservative Party, while those at the bottom of the income scale are more on Labour's side. Similarly, Hindus are much more likely to back the Tories, while Muslims are overwhelmingly in favour of Labour. This is what the Conservative Party wants to tap into by voting Rishi Sunak to be their leader. He plays to the galleries with an overt display of being Hindu. He and his wife Akshata Murthy, daughter of the Indian businessman Narayan Murthy, are among the top 250 richest people in the UK. He represents finance capital, having worked in Goldman Sachs and some hedge funds, and stands for neoliberal economic policies that finance loves. No more irresponsible borrowing. No more spiralling debt at the taxpayer's expense. No more passing the debt to the next generation. And ironically, he backs curbs on immigration. We do not have control of our borders. Every year, thousands and thousands of people come into the UK illegally. Often, we don't know who they are, where they're from, and why they're here. In fact, Rishi Sunak is the perfect conservative for a very, very unpopular Tory government. 
He brings everything that the conservative vote base wants. To that, he adds the swing vote of Indian Hindus. Now, Hindus might not be large in number, but they have a lot of money and a lot of power. At the end of the day, Rishi Sunak does not represent growing British multiculturalism or the growing cloud of Indians abroad. He's just a good old-fashioned British conservative. That's the show today. Keep watching News Click, subscribe to our channel, like this video, comment and do share it as well.